and welcome back. We are about to embark on a two-part conversation this morning with the leader of the opposition, none other than Shine Barrow, who's here to talk to us about a range of topics that are developing. Uh, good morning, Mr. Barrow. Good, good morning, morning. Sandy. Good morning, gentle lady. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Yes, good morning, Belize. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite an interesting uh, week. We last spoke with you in person on March 6th. Well, at least I did. And you were on the ground. It was Elections Day across the country for the municipals. I haven't seen you since. Um, we've you seen heard from me, though. We heard from you, yes, you, we did. You, you didn't show up. You sent your colleague, <laughs> Paul Lopez. So. I'm stretched thin many <laughs> times, right? You so you the forgive me. That I, I've been dodging you since <laughs> Election Day. I'll take that one. I've been stretched thin. Okay. But yes. We've seen the results of what transpired uh, during the recent municipal elections. Mm. My first question to you, uh, Mr. Barrow, is whether you've had a chance to sit with the members of your party, perhaps the executive, to comprehensively review what transpired and perhaps what could have been done differently in terms of either your campaign in terms of either your candidate selection or the entire process as it is? Yes, the comprehensive review has been on the way since um, Wednesday night, uh, mm -hmm. last Wednesday night. And uh, the executive has uh, been in constant talks. And uh, it's pretty clear uh, what uh, worked and what did not work. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, that, that has been ongoing. And uh, you know, I'd like to congratulate uh, Mayor Trapp mm -hmm. and the San Ignacio Santa Elena team um, and put things in perspective. Sure. In, in 2021, uh, we had municipalities, had multiple municipalities that we lost. In 2024, we gained four, uh, f four, yes, four uh, seats in the Twin Tongues and took control of that municipality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In PG, we're going to court uh, to challenge the result of our mayoral um, candidate because he won by 10, then there was a recount and, and they found they found 35 mm -hmm. ballots. Mm -hmm. That's suspicious, to to, to put it mm -hmm. mildly. Um, in Belize City, your good friend, Sister B, mm -hmm. uh, Denise Barrow, got the most votes of all the UDP area representatives, mm -hmm. and beat. Pretty boy, Palad, by 400, mm -hmm. having the greatest margin of victory of all the parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, people like to criticize the gentle lady and talk about the honorable host. Mm -hmm. But as one of your colleagues put it, she did go host to host. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I believe I'll segue to the analysis, which is still on the way. We have a National Party Council on March 23rd um, where that the results of that uh, review will be presented to the party and the way forward mm -hmm. as far as the central executive is concerned will be presented to the party for uh, deliberation. Um, but when you look at the results in Queen Square that means the gentle lady was doing her work. Mm -hmm. God, and I've, I've always said that, you know, it, it pains me the way that she's bashed and trashed. But she's been doing her work. I, she I, I also has a responsibility to sit in parliament responsibility, as an era Responsibility to serve her people, not to go to parliament to listen to Julius and this one disrespect. And, I don't and, know and, that and, I entirely agree with uncool. what you're saying. 
you are subject to your opinion. When you become what a matters, representative, but what matters are the you results. You swear an oath to I, attend I, I, I hear you. parliament. And you also an swear, you swear an oath to serve your people. Mm -hmm. So the point that I'm making is service mm -hmm. matters. Uh, delivering, executing yes. on the promises matters. And that is what uh, we've concluded that in too many instances, uh, certain standard bearers, they simply weren't doing the work. Mm -hmm. um, you have one instance where a standard bearer got elected in a convention and then disappeared. Mm -hmm. went off somewhere i don't want to say too many details because i don't want to single well, look at my let me colleague. draw a scenario I, I, just let me finish mm -hmm. my, my my sentence ran off for months came back and then did not want to take advice from mm -hmm. the senior members of that region mm -hmm. and on election day had didn't even have tables or scrutineers nothing mm -hmm. how could we expect to um, take back a municipality from a government that was prepared, that had their machinery in place, and had candidates and standard bearers that did the work. So as party leader, is there any reprimand for that? Is there any consequence, or, or how, how is that dealt of, of, with of that course, particularly? Of, of course. Uh, you know, we, and that's what I meant by cutting the fat when mm -hmm. I said it on a, a previous telecast. Um, it's not about the resources. The resources were unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No party leader of the UDP um, in opposition has ever provided so much resources. Uh, I worked very closely with my party chairman mm -hmm. and my vice chairman. Uh, all of us traveling all across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Alberta Argus had training after training uh, to make sure election readiness uh, was on target. Uh, so the consequence has to be no quarrel. It is not a uh, path of acrimony. Mm -hmm. It is just reality. I gave everyone, or let me rephrase that, we, the leadership executive, mm -hmm. gave everyone a chance, which was a strategic error. If I do accept uh, any type of culpability for what took place last Wednesday. So it's to say that you would have perhaps bitten off more than you could have chewed. I ask that simply because... I, I think that's a bad way to put it. But I, you famously I, said you yeah. were gunning for nine municipalities. I, 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 do believe, I do believe that that was a strategic error. It's not biting off more than you can chew. Mm -hmm. It's that uh, everything looked good. Mm -hmm. And the, the blessing in all of this mm -hmm. is that it is a teachable moment. Thank goodness it is not the general elections while the pain is that there will be arrogance and, and further contempt of the Belizean people by the Brasenia administration. Uh, uh, my colleague was here yesterday talking about he went from um, no talent or limited talent to know its limited abilities as far as the public officers are concerned. Uh, the stevedores are still striking. All these results have done is give the monster of the PUP even more of a mandate to uh, ruin and destroy the country as far as we see it. So that is painful. Um, so the strategic error was in focusing in places where the probability mm -hmm. was not as high. Because I, you know, everyone has a right to ambition, everyone has a right to dream and to visualize themselves as succeeding, right? Fear, but but, but the pragmatic. practicality, exactly, the practicality of getting favorable results mm -hmm. uh, moving forward we have to be real mm -hmm. and so it's a matter of probability listen you think you could win um, mm -hmm. fine go find your resources uh, do your thing right work hard and, and and we wish you the best but we think we have a greater probability mm -hmm. over here and that is where the resources are going what? to be focused what municipality did you believe that uh, you would have a higher chance, you would have had an, a higher chance to secure had you focused more on the area where your strengths were? Well, obviously PG. Um, mm -hmm. You know, PG just needed 
a little more uh, resources. They, they won, uh, at least the, the mayor won, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, <laughs> the, the video is there where Galvez walks out and practically concedes, and then they find 35 votes. Uh, but certainly more focus there, mm -hmm. we could have brought in the entire slate. Uh, Dan Griga, um, same thing, and Benke, you know, uh, we're going to go to court on that too because having the constitution is clear. No one can gain nationality that comes from a country that doesn't recognize our territorial integrity, specifically Guatemala. And it was something that the Barrow administration stopped mm -hmm. because of that constitutionality. And it continues now. Uh, the 500 people from Melchor voted uh, in the Benke municipality. Um, but the point is we focused on municipalities where the probability uh, was very slim mm -hmm. to win. But it okay. is difficult. It is difficult in the circumstances of a, a fragile unity, a fragile coming together. Remember, remember when I became leader, we spent a year mm -hmm a year and, and months publicly feuding, mm -hmm. yeah. right? There, there was constant attacks on my leadership and part of my uh, goal and objective was to bring the party together. So it's difficult to bring the party together and then have those difficult conversations saying, listen, um, you, don't, you, know, you don't stand a good chance, so we're not going to be able to give you as much resources okay. as you like. So, so, okay. so hold on. So, so I gave everyone mm -hmm. equally, proportionally, which was a strategic error. Mm -hmm. But now I am liberated. I am free from the shackles of that bondage. Uh, the, the leadership executive is free. And we can have those difficult decisions because everybody gets a run. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, I hate and, and who delivered, regardless of winning, look at Belmopan. Mm -hmm. Yes, Belmopan didn't win. We all thought Belmopan would come through. But Belmopan made a drastic turnaround from 2020 where uh, the era representative lost by mm -hmm. 2,100 votes to know um, Leslie, which is one of the councillor candidates, came within 200 votes mm -hmm. of uh, securing a seat. So that's a dramatic uh, improvement. Well, Mr. Barrow, I, yes. I hate to draw comparisons, but perhaps this is an appropriate one at this point. Notwithstanding... You hold a seat as party leader. Mr. Faber was once the party leader. Sure. Nonetheless, there is sober and there is romantic. Romantic, in a sense, would mean that when you famously said you wanted all nine municipalities, some would say or argue that that would have been unrealistic given the nature of the situation that the People's United Party remains a popular organization. I totally disagree with that. They're one of the most extremely unpopular organizations. But they, they won in stunning form. That's they won, they, That was a transactional victory. Sober, you look in Belize City, they, they did not even have a parade because they weren't even sure if they were going to win based on their performance. Their performance is terrible. They're not popular with the stevedores, the well, caneros, that's, the that's teachers. That's equally subjective if that were the case. But if you allow me to, to, Sorry, to continue... Mm -hmm. Sober, in a sense, would mean that when we spoke with the former party leader, he was more conservative in how he looked at what would have been practical in terms of the number of seats that the United Democratic Party could have garnered. Mm -hmm. So if you're going nine and he's saying, okay, we're looking at perhaps five realistically, but at least we'd be making certain inroads, mm -hmm. when that is put out there to the public, one could argue that, okay, well, maybe you made a rookie mistake as, as a political novice versus someone who has been there for over 20 years and he understands how politics at the local and at the general level stands. You know, the attempt to try to pit me against my colleague... Um, it's just an is, example is, based is, on is, an it's, observation. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, it is regrettable on your part, and that has been the problem for the last two years is this uh, attempt to divide and conquer the UDP. We are a team. Mm -hmm. We all sat there. We all sat there in the National Party Council, in the Central Executive, 
when decisions were being made. Uh, and Patrick was there too. Mm -hmm. And nobody said, oh, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 no, no, no. Definitely you can't get this one money. You can't get that one money. Mm -hmm. This 35, the four, no way. No one said that. Mm -hmm. So while um, he may have been a bit more uh, relaxed, I believe that as leader, there has to be a projection of optimism. There has to be, again, when I, I remember the, um, the village councils. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the village councils, I said, you know, um, we'll, we'll make some gains. Mm -hmm. I was lambasted by one of your colleagues. Oh, um, Shine Bar already said that they know I win much. Mm -hmm. So it's hip hypocritical of you to, when I am sober and say, well, you know, I don't know. I tried that course. Mm -hmm. And then it didn't sit well, not just with the media, but then with the public. Because then if I don't believe we're going to win, why would the public believe we're going to mm -hmm. win? So there's a level of projection that has to take place. And I was able to, in my mind, outline the reasons why we could win in an mm -hmm. orange walk. What happens after we don't win in an orange walk is the analysis needs to take place as to what went wrong and what was the probability and who sold a dream Mm -hmm. uh, again, for me, publicly, it is important to project confidence. Sure. It is important that we believe we can win so that the public believes they can win. So I have no regret in having uh, declared that all nine were in reach. In every election, everything is up for grabs. Mm -hmm. That is the beauty mm -hmm. of democracy. They are always shockers. So I do concede, however, that having made that projection having given that uh, public um, perception of confidence mm -hmm. that uh, internally the resources should have been focused um, on the five that were definitely in reach. So you're in opposition. But, that was, a, but that was, a, that was a, a team decision. Fair enough. Don't, don't single me out. Fair enough. I worked very closely with Patrick. Patrick gave me was giving me advice every step of the way. So mm -hmm. don't try to divorce him from no, no, no. the Again, process and talk an about... No, so, I'm, I, so I am, and I'm explaining to you mm -hmm. that we work closely together. This was not the Patrick and Shine of two years ago. He was mm -hmm. calling me and telling me, listen, this one needs this, that one needs that. I think yeah. you should do this and I think you should do that. And I don't remember telling him no once. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me go in a slightly different direction though. As an outsider, as the everman, if you turn... And then, and then I just, I just uh -huh. one, one second, right? We made gains. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm saying. You, you shouldn't try to pit one leader against the other Fair, leader. Allow me to move on past that then. Right? Allow we me made to, gains. No, allow I'm me to just go saying. beyond that at this point. So as the everman, as an outsider, you either turn on your television or you come out into the streets and... You look at what's taking place in terms of an active campaign and the political ads and what have you. Clearly, the PUP was flush. They had money to spend and so on and so forth. But on election day, at least in Belize City, where I was stationed, I drove around, I provided most of the coverage across all 10 constituencies, and I did not see the presence of UDP supporters on the ground at the respective polling stations or, other, or elsewhere, mm -hmm. the way I saw PUPs, and I'm not talking simply about blue shirts, because we all know that aspect of party politics on the day. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about familiar faces who would man these particular stations on behalf of their respective parties. The UDP, from my observation, was severely lacking where that was concerned. What explains that? Well, that's a part of the analysis. Um, if colleagues are telling you they have it under control it certainly wasn't resources you know mm -hmm. you talk about flush talk about um ads i ad i advertise as much on channel five mm -hmm. as the pup we were going ad for ad mm -hmm. so um it wasn't resources uh and colleagues got the resources to bring out uh the supporters but shine barrow or patrick farber or the leadership executive cannot be in 
each of the constituencies. Mm -hmm. That is a responsibility of he or she mm -hmm. that wants to be an era representative that is the standard bearer. And so that is a part of the analysis to see who uh, delivered, who brought their people out. And the numbers don't lie, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? The numbers don't lie. Um, and so we look at the numbers and we look at what you're saying as far as the normal people coming out. But that is not, people don't just magically appear on election day. They have to be mobilized. You have to, you have to, but you have to have an infrastructure mm -hmm. in place to organize and mobilize your people. Mm -hmm. And that is not the leader. The leader doesn't give a speech and everyone is like, yes, mm -hmm. I'm going out. No, if you notice how we run the campaign in all of the ads, in all of the messaging, it wasn't about shine barrow. It wasn't about, you know, our strong uh, era representatives. It was about the municipal slates. Um, it was about the national issues, the local issues, and our standard bearers, according to the Constitution of the United Democratic Party, they have a responsibility to organize and to mobilize their people. And if you're effective in doing so, then people will come out. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not a resource thing. They did not lack resources. Uh, maybe they lack support and that is the analysis um that we're doing now have you had a chance or an opportunity to do any form of introspection mm -hmm. with respect of your leadership thus far i ask simply because sometimes we don't necessarily look at how the war is won or lost we look at the person who's at the helm of the conflict and to see how organized or how strong or effective their leadership skills are. Yes. In this particular case, have you had any chance to look inward and say maybe I should have approached differently or employed a different strategy or what have you? Well, I think I conceded my strategic error mm -hmm. um, in focusing where I should not have focused. And that was not due to being a neophyte by any means. That was due to trying to keep the party together unified again you speak about patrick he and i discussed this and he told me you know I, I i have to tell you that you couldn't have done it any other way because had you not included those municipalities where the probability of winning was slim it would have disrupted the party because then we would have had a public feuding and colleagues would have been out there and that would have damaged the overall mm -hmm party um yes yeah, so obviously every leader has to continue to evolve mm -hmm. and has to continue to grow and has to continue to receive constructive criticism um but in this instance i continue to look within i continue to look in the mirror um but i worked with a team mm -hmm. This was not the shine show. Mm -hmm. uh, Alberto August, again, was right there next to me for budget, for everything. There was not a, an advice that he gave me that I said, ah, oh, no, I want to do it my way. Same thing with Patrick. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that brought Patrick on and said, listen, what do you need? Let's, you know, do the city together. You take these constituencies, um, go down south for me. Uh, you know, when you're in Cayo, call a meeting for we, we worked together so, so it, it wasn't a matter of um and again i think that was more important than anything i don't mean to cut you was bringing the party together and not you know making a bunch of unilateral mm -hmm. decisions mm -hmm. we did it together now what needs to happen is we all need to take accountability just like i'm saying mm -hmm. as leader yes i should have put my foot down and said you know what, um, while publicly I'm saying we can win everything, mm -hmm. it's not probable we need to go here, which is what I'm doing now. But due to circumstances, I was held hostage to unity. So on the point of accountability, as you mentioned, an analysis is currently underway where uh, the post-mortem of the election, you guys are trying to figure out what went wrong and how can we fix it. Mm. Um, we have also been talking about the general elections set to take place next year. Mm -hmm. Are you prepared to have that same analysis should you not win on yourself? Oh, if it, well, my position, which I've, you know, taken 
is that if I don't get 16 seats, if I don't get between, I don't know if it's 10 or 12, I said 10, 16 seats, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would step aside and allow, you know, the party to elect another leader. I would, I would tender my resignation if, if we don't get 16, 10 to 16 seats in the next general election. In all of this, I'm not hearing Tracy Panton's name in terms of her uh, playing a critical role in the campaign effort. And in much the same way you've mentioned uh, Mr. Faber's name, I'm almost certain that you have perhaps Hugo Pat in the North who would have been responsible at some point to, to mobilize well, and, you, and get you, the... You mentioned Patrick's name. Yeah, but... No, 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 I'm... Come you on. mentioned Patrick's yes, name, you mentioned you, Alberto's you, name, yes, right? But yes. I'm certain that there are other persons yes, who were but, equally but, as but instrumental. Don't, but, then, but... All right, so you jump from Tracy to Ugo. I, I don't know, finish your thought. <laughs> I mean, not it seems as if though, by me mentioning Mr. Farber's name earlier, it struck a nerve with you, and I'm trying to move why away you, from that. No, it was why, only an example. Why, why, are you, why are you hunkering down on that? I'm saying you are the one. I had to move You are the one. Major. No, but you're going into other I'm colleagues. I'm simply saying I'm not hearing. Okay, so yeah. in Belize City, for instance, right? Yeah. You have 10 constituencies, right? Yes. But you only have three era representatives, yourself included. No, we have four era representatives. Four, I'm sorry, city. with the inclusion of Sister B. You're right. You the, have the top, four. The top <laughs> vote getter. How could I, how could I the, overlook the biggest my margin, apologies? Yes, yeah. Yeah, cool uh, but I'm saying, right? She actually had an opponent. She's the only one that had an opponent. Yeah. The rest of us but we're not, have no we're opponents not, We're not hearing city. about the efforts of the other persons. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting at. No, you, you mentioned someone particularly. You said Tracy. Yeah. Tracy has a, a foot problem. Mm -hmm. She is, I think she's leaving the country shortly to go have surgery. Um, so she focused on Albert. Mm -hmm. um, but I supported her. I did um, as best as I could to make sure that she had the resources that um, she needed. Um, but we did not work uh, mm -hmm. on the wider mm -hmm. city and the wider country the way that I did uh, with Patrick. Certainly Ugo um, and the regional leader, uh, Antonio Herrera, you know, they worked uh, very hard over there in the north. Um, and in the south, we had Norman Usher, the regional leader for the south. So they are, again, it's a team. I, I think mm -hmm. I, I mentioned that. Uh, forgive me if I did not name every team member, but you, sp you specifically said mm -hmm. why I didn't mention Tracy. It's because we did, she did not play a bigger role than her constituency. She mm -hmm. focused on Alberts. And uh, as I said, she has an injury, so maybe that played a role and mm -hmm. did not want to burden her um, to carry more than she could based on her lim uh, limits. Not that she has limited abilities as mm -hmm. the... Uh, my, my colleague said last night well, or yesterday. Well, uh, I, I, we want to take a quick break. Sure. We appreciate where the conversation is going, but uh, we do have to take a very short break. Sure. And when we come back, we'll continue. Sure. Hello friends, I'm Dr. Bob Roberts with another 60 second sermon from God's Word. The Bible says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never thirst, and shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Today people are hungering and thirsting for a fresh word from God. And yet sometimes I fear that today's preaching is designed more to make people feel good than to satisfy their hunger and to quench their thirst. Helmut Tillich tells the story of a man walking down a street in Hamburg, Germany one day when breakfast was just a memory and of, and of seeing a sign in the window that said, fresh bread for sale. He was hungry and could almost smell the bread. He turned around and went into the store and asked for a fresh slice of fresh bread. The owner said, oh, we don't bake bread here, we just make signs. Sometimes I feel the church is better at making signs than baking bread. They are at better at marketing their church than they are at presenting Christ, the bread of life available to the hungry. May the hungry find their way to our churches seeking bread and not leave disappointed, but leave satisfied because they have found Jesus Christ, the living bread. 
Today's 60-second sermon has been presented by Christian Foundations of Faith in cooperation with the Baptist churches in your area. Welcome back. We are continuing our conversation with the leader of the opposition, Honorable Shine Barrow. And uh, we just came off the heels of uh, uh, a post-mortem, really, of the elections, the municipal elections that was held last week, Wednesday. In this uh, second half of the conversation, though, we want to touch really quickly on the budget presentation that uh, was currently underway yesterday and last week. Uh, Mr. Barrow, give us, a, give us a brief overview of what you make of that presentation. Well, it's uh, more of the same. Uh, you look at different uh, parliaments, and by the way, welcome to the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association mm -hmm. uh, delegation from the UK. Mm -hmm. They're here, uh, members of the Labour Party and the Conservative Party are here. I'll be meeting with them. I believe they've met with some of my other colleagues. Um, but you look at different parliaments and governments across the globe who are grappling with inflation mm -hmm. and they implement policies to deal with inflation. I don't see anything in the budget or did not hear anything in the budget speech or see anything in the budget items that is directly speaking to inflation and the highest cost of living, mm -hmm. um, which is critical. Uh, the quality of life for Belizeans, all governments must see to it that they work to improve it. And we have not seen that from this government in any of the budgets. Uh, the only thing that stuck out to me, uh, which I have been saying for the past few years, I've been advocating for health care. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've been saying that the infrastructure budget should not be larger than the health oh. budget. Mm -hmm. And so I do concede that in this year's budget, finally, the Prime Minister is listening mm -hmm. to myself and other uh, sober, objective minds, and so the health budget is bigger than the infrastructure budget. And so I hope to see, I know we have the, the um, CAT scan here, mm -hmm. I hope to see that the essentials that the public health officials have been crying for, I hope to see in this budget that those monies will go to providing all of the basic things mm -hmm. that so what the public make, health facilities need. What do you make of the expansion of the national health insurance? Uh, it's been this administration's uh, objective to be able to expand NHI across the, the country. country. And yeah. they've made significant progress where that is concerned. Mm. What is your perspective on that? I don't know how well that is working out. You know, some of my colleagues in the, in the field and some constituents say there's so many hidden fees there that it, it, it still turns out uh, to be a burden. Uh, and, you know, the basic things that they deal with still does not um, satisfy the larger problem that mm -hmm. we have in the public health sector. And so I hope that this budget uh, will be spent uh, wisely and applied uh, to the deficits, to the crisis areas that we have. Um, but I do um, have some optimism because that is, everything does not have to be a battle. Mm -hmm. um, when we criticize the government, I am not a leader or a parliamentarian that criticizes for the sake of criticizing. I just want better for the people of Belize. And I would like us to get to a point, um, as with, let's say, the health budget, we could partner on that. That's something that we're prepared to support the government on spending more on health. What would that partnership look like? Well, it starts right now in me saying that I am pleased mm -hmm. that the health budget is finally more than the infrastructure budget. There's mm -hmm. no way we should be spending more on infrastructure mm -hmm. than the health of Belizean people. Mm -hmm. And so in my uh, budget speech, 
um, I will be outlining the different things that that money should go to mm -hmm. and so begins the partnership uh, I would like to see more money go to health mm -hmm. than what has been um, allotted right what? and that's where the partnership begins because we can agree on that mm -hmm. we can't agree on spending this obscene amount of money on infrastructure that has been uh, in the past what and, and again this year what would be the other areas that you would focus on um, uh, using this budget? And I ask you that because I remember last year you did a, you did a presentation um, of something very similar of what I was asking. If you were given the opportunity to create this budget, yeah. how would you outline it? Yeah, so I, I, I believe that uh, citizen security is still a problem. You know, rest in peace to the mother and the child that mm -hmm. were executed yesterday in Belmopan, in Belmopan uh, about a year since the um, Ramna race uh, mm -hmm. executions so we still have a problem uh, you know if I don't have the tally in my head uh, but there's been quite a lot of murders since January mm -hmm. um, so we still need uh, to solve the citizen security problem um, and I still believe that uh, with all due respect to the Commissioner of Police I think he has done as good as he could do mm -hmm. um, in his service under both administrations but it is time to make way for new leadership um, in the police department um, and I do believe a cabinet shuffle uh, is warranted to give new prisms, uh, a new brain there uh, to see how we can do better with uh, citizen uh, security. Uh, human, were, human, sorry. If there were any detractors over the last year or so, where one would say, look, the police department is failing in its duties to protect and serve, and the Ministry of Home Affairs has lost its way. If one were to look at the figures for last year, where they are touting that there was a significant decrease in the number of homicides across the country, yeah. right? Perhaps that dispels whatever criticism was brought against the administration and, of course, the law enforcement agency. I but if one were to look at what's been happening since the beginning of this year, because we have a habit of or perhaps not a habit, we have a way of looking at crime and violence as central primarily to Belize City. Mm -hmm. That hasn't necessarily been the case since the beginning of the year. If you notice the trend, a lot of these incidents are happening outside of Belize City. Yeah. What would be your observation in respect of that or your uh, perhaps comments regarding this new pattern? I, again, we, don't, we need to address the matter, not Belize City-centric. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of crime and violence, a matter of murders, and has to be accountability. We need to improve the conviction rate uh, because unless there are consequences uh, to these heinous crimes that take place, uh, people will have no deterrence. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a matter that needs to be solved. But there's a lot of uh, demoralization and dejection within the ranks of the police um, department, uh, and that all comes from leadership and that all comes from uh, minister uh, to commissioner and as I said I don't want to be unkind uh, to mm -hmm. the commissioner of police to say he was the worst ever I, I won't go there um, I just feel that his time has come um, mm -hmm. to an end and we need to um, pivot uh, and that would help to solve the problem nationwide um, and I'm Again, I always encourage that more monies need to be spent because that is a resource issue. Uh, we need to look at how we pay uh, our police officers. Uh, they're woefully underpaid and their job uh, to serve and protect, uh, putting themselves at risk. Uh, it's quite difficult to do when you're living paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. when you can't pay your mortgage, when um, you know healthcare services are not readily available and you can't even afford uh, the health care services it's based on the, the pay it's that you're making. It's interesting that you're saying that <coughs> the 
members of law enforcement, in this case the police department, they are woefully underpaid. Yes. But when you look at the bigger picture, the wage ban is as bloated as it's ever been. When you look at the public that, sector. That, that doesn't change the reality on the ground. And I, I, you know, I don't work for the IMF. I work for the Belizean people. Mm -hmm. So to me, um, our wage bill needs to be whatever it needs to be <laughs> to, to make sure that our people have a, a you know, standard quality of life. Uh, that, that's really the target. The target is to make sure that every Belizean um, you know, has quality uh, housing, uh, quality health care, um, can afford to educate their kids, can afford a, a vacation at least mm -hmm. once a year. That is the target. That, that is the Belizean dream. So whatever we need to do, if they want to call the wage bill bloated, uh, I'd, I'd bloat it more as Prime Minister to make sure that if, if, how are we going to fight crime? How are we going to fight the, the narco elements if our law enforcement can't pay their mortgages, can't, you know, educate their kids. This is a, a reality yeah. uh, all across the country. I want to segue really quickly, Mr. Barrow, to uh, news that was announced last week, and uh, that was of Mr. Ellerington that was charged for rape. Of course, this was uh, something that was developing for the past weeks. I want to know what was your reaction to the, the news? Yes, well, uh, we all knew who the accused was uh, for quite some time, so uh, I believe it was just a matter of time. And, you know, I'd like to uh, commend the uh, DPP for uh, taking her time and not rushing to charge. Uh, the accused um, and the court of law will decide guilt or innocence um, as I had said previously uh, this is not the O.J. Ellington that mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. and um, you know I pray for the victims uh, and I pray for justice right um, and the courts will decide have you spoken to him? Yeah. Have you spoken to him since this entire ordeal took place? Uh, yes, yes. You know, I wished him um, the best, and um, you know, I, we hope that justice prevails. If, How if does he's, the party do this development, uh, though? We hope that you know he gets justice, and if he's not, then we hope that the victims get justice. In the first instance, he stepped down as legal counsel to the UDP. But on March 6th, he was in San Pedro, functioning on behalf of the party during the municipals. How does the United Democratic Party now view this development in respect of Mr. Ellington? Yes, well, um, he has a relationship with the standard bearer in um, Belize Rural South in, mm -hmm. in San Pedro actually has an office out there. Um, so uh, he was out there working with his colleague. Um, but he has no official role in the party. That, that uh, official function of the party stopped uh, months ago when these um, allegations came about. So he, he's not an official of the party. We, we condemn, we condemn Fair enough. rape, we condemn violence against women, and, and that, that remains, and we take this very serious, mm -hmm. um, and we encourage all of our colleagues to be very careful uh, mm -hmm. so that they don't find themselves uh, in these uh, positions mm -hmm. uh, to even be accused, but uh, that's why we have a justice system. Uh, you know, it can't be that anyone can just say that I accuse you and that's it. Uh, we have mm -hmm. a court of law and we have to go through that process. And as I said, I, the, the, myself and the party, we hope that justice prevails. Whichever way lay the justice scales tip. Let's, let's circle back to your leadership. One of the things that I've been able to gather as 
a reporter in the field when we're covering municipals and when we're dealing with matters of, of politics. There's a sentiment, I won't go as far as say it's a prevailing sentiment, but there is a sentiment out there that there are members of the United Democratic Party who may not necessarily be in the echelons of the UDP in the executive and so on and so forth, but they may very well be the ground persons who cast a vote in favor of the party. Sentiment being anyone in leadership but Shine Barrow. And perhaps that affects the turnout of voters who come out to cast a ballot in the favor of the United Democratic Party. How do you look at that? How do you, how do you take that you, criticism you know, you know, as Isa it is? Isani, the problem I have with that is that maybe your opinion for you to hold on hold I, I on hold on hold on I, I want I, no 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 but no. ho, 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 hold on channel five kudos to channel five they did one of the most comprehensive municipal coverage mm -hmm. going all across this country interviewing all sorts of people udps and pups and not independence and third and parties. independence and third parties. Yes. Not once did you, your station, report that. So if you said that you, as a reporter, heard that, how come you never hear it with that comprehensive? Uh, Do you legitimately believe that person? Sir, no, 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 that the whole dialogue works. Go right ahead. Your Barack. coverage was brutal on both ends. You know, I've accused um, Channel 5 in the past of, of being a satellite of Amalia Mai. I, I have to withdraw that. You know, you guys have been very objective and given equal coverage um, to all the political parties, in particular mm -hmm. the two mass parties. Um, but your coverage of the municipals was extensive and comprehensive and I am sure if that was the sentiment with the man on the ground where or the woman on the ground where is that mm -hmm. why I had a vote for the UDP but as long as Shine borrowed it and you would have heard that at least once sir 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 heard it yourself sir, too. sir sir you did not report that in your extensive coverage so I have to take that as your opinion and I have to take that yes there are people in the party we are a party that is reuniting mm -hmm. we are a party that is healing so with all of the bloodletting mm -hmm. and all of the civil war that we went through of course there are people that still have feelings that is a fact mm -hmm. but to say that that was a factor in the elections that is ridiculous because if it was you would have captured that you guys went to every municipality you guys interviewed everyone and that is not something that we heard if you were hearing that you would have asked me mm -hmm. about that prior to today no hindsight of course my adversaries of course my adversaries there are there are still people mm -hmm. who want to be leader there are still people you know who feel like oh their choice for leader um, is the right choice fine? That's a mm -hmm. part of democracy. So of course everybody will have something to say no. But I think, you know, I thank God that one of the things that I was able to do mm -hmm. is lead the party into the elections with confidence. Mm -hmm. Nobody was saying why UDP no already UDP want take on but that is not what you were hearing on the streets. That is not what you were hearing in your coverage. Mm -hmm. What you were hearing is rampant criticism of the ruling party you said in popular mm -hmm. i don't know about that obviously they're not as unpopular where people are coming out and they just want to get rid of them i can see that mm -hmm. they haven't reached as one of your colleagues would say um i, I don't want to say the word i don't want to get in trouble but they haven't well, reached reserve that to that yeah, media host. to that media host they yes. haven't reached mm -hmm. there um yet i think they're pretty 
close. But 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 no, it's on it. That is that is. Do not, you believe then that is not uh, the unified front that we saw on nomination day, where yourself, the Albert area rep, um, Mr. Faber, and all the others who are part of the upper tier of the United Democratic Party, was a bit belated going into the municipals. It was real. Um, and you can't force things before they could happen. And that's why when, you know, some of your colleagues were saying, oh, um, are you just doing this for the elections? No, we were doing it because it was real. That's how we all mm -hmm. felt. Um, we were all working for the victory. Um, and we're still working. Uh, you know, as I said, uh, uh, Patrick was one of the first people that I called um, in doing the postmortem. And the first thing he said to me is, you know, brother, I can't blame you for this loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know I'll be one of them people. You gave everything as far as resources, unprecedented. And, you know, some of our colleagues need to be changed. Mm -hmm. Some of our colleagues need to do the right thing. And we need to, to narrow down. That was our conversation. And we all know Patrick to be straightforward. And we know that he and I have not shared the best relationship, so you would mm -hmm. anticipate that maybe he'd be one of the first ones to say, Uno se, uno se, I tell uno. So you expect, mm -hmm. you expect that he'd tell you the truth? Of course, that's the only Patrick that I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we have not just spoke uh, on Thursday, but we've been speaking regularly in doing mm -hmm. this post-mortem. And um, Alberta August, you know, all of my colleagues, Ugo Pat, um, you know, so, so we have to focus on the general elections and I still enjoy the confidence of my colleagues where there are people mm -hmm. um, on the ground, UDPs on the ground that may still uh, be suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome from the civil war that we had. I, I will do more to reach out to those people. And I do believe in part of what you said as far as it being belated, it was real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But however, you can't expect that us coming together in the last days before the elections, um, you can't expect to see the results of that in those elections. But we must continue on that mm -hmm. path of unity. We have about, they said maybe August, they would call elections. Mm -hmm. That's what I hear some of you pundits saying, maybe November. Uh, so that's six to 12 months if they call it this year. If not, we have. 18 months if they call it next year so that's a lot of time to continue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the unity do you which was which was really active it was not just a press conference mm -hmm. patrick and i in particular worked closely together not just in belize city but across the country and that was real you mm -hmm. know we unified for the purpose of winning and we're still talking right now uh, analyzing things and i'm checking with him what do you think about this and he's giving me advice and that continues and I believe that 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 is what needs to happen mm -hmm. so that if I don't deliver for the general elections at a certain threshold mm -hmm. uh, where we win or you know I get 12 seats or, or whatever I will step aside without any malice without any mm -hmm. acrimony and I will support my successor mm -hmm. for the sake of the Belizean people do you believe that uh you stand a chance to either becoming the Prime Minister of Belize next year or uh, gathering those 10 to 12 seats that you mentioned? I, my focus is to become the next Prime Minister of Belize under UDP government. Uh, we definitely have um, 16 seats. We've narrowed it down to 18 seats. I could go as much as 21 seats, but having learned... <laughs> Not to be romantic, but sober. <laughs> sober. Uh, we're, we're at 18. Um, and uh, yes, there is a pathway, uh, but, but that requires, you know, uh, one of the best conversations I had in the last seven days was with one of my colleagues, and I called her um, maybe a few days ago, and she is one of the people that doesn't have a high probability mm -hmm. of winning. And I explained to her, it's not her leadership capacity. Mm -hmm. It's not her um, 
it's nothing to do with her. I think she's an mm -hmm. excellent candidate, which is why I supported her candidacy. But she's up against, it's, it's an uphill battle. It's a steep climb, who the, the minister that she's up against. And we would want to shift resources mm -hmm. in a constituency where we actually have a chance. And my colleague said to me, you know, um, I'm prepared to make that sacrifice. I'm prepared to make that sacrifice. I will continue building relationships in my constituency so that when there is a crack, when there is a turn, mm -hmm. right? Let's look at the long term. Maybe not this elections, but the one after that. I will continue working mm -hmm. so that when that time comes, we'll be ready. And, and I, I was very pleased with, 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 with that and I, and I, position. And I, I like your inference. I'll use another example here to, to perhaps illustrate the point that you're making. If we look at Lake Independence and we look at other known PUP strongholds, some would argue that perhaps it's best to just have a placeholder there because at the end of the day, that's a losing seat. That's, a, that's like, for instance, if you look at Queen Square or Mesopotamia from the other side, to put someone there that goes up against these political strongholds, it's, you're putting resources in, a, in an area where you know you're not going to get the kind of gains yeah. that you would have wanted. Yeah. Does that, is that a fair? No, that, that's fair, but for mm -hmm. the, the difference between the municipals and general mm -hmm. is there was a pathway to victory in Belize City if colleagues would have performed uh, up to par, mm -hmm. uh, meaning it's a numbers game. Yeah. So in Alekai, Obviously, we would not um, beat uh, Cousin Hyde, mm -hmm. but if we got a certain amount in mm -hmm. Lake, a certain amount in Free Tongue, a certain amount in Caribbean Shores, which we did get the amount that we were looking for um, in Caribbean Shores, um, then there would have been a pathway. But certainly, um, colleagues in those uh, str PUP strongholds mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I believe they will be reasonable and they will understand where the resources need to go. I think the difficulty comes where the probability is, is greater and it's not just a, a straight up Colonel Hyde or a, a straight up mm -hmm. uh, a Francis Fonseca or someone who is a, a juggernaut in their mm -hmm. constituency and, and where a colleague may think, you know, I could do it. Um, the party has to make those difficult decisions to say, this is where the probability is highest, and that is where we're going. But it doesn't stop. Our constitution does not require the party to um, give any resources mm -hmm. to any constituency. Mm -hmm. The standard bearer and their executive team are charged with finding the resources. You should have a women's group. You should have a youth group. Mm -hmm. You should have a PR group. And you should have a fundraising group in your constituency. And so. I am not here to, to steal anyone's thunder. I am not here to hijack anyone's dream mm -hmm. of becoming an era rep. So do the work mm -hmm. and My find the resources and, and, and you know, prove the party wrong. There have been colleagues who have done that in the past mm -hmm. where the party didn't believe in a certain candidate and that candidate actually went on and became an era representative. Mm -hmm. My final question for you, Mr. Barrow. How do you look at your image and your activities outside of Belize versus the perception that Belizeans have of you at home. I ask in this particular context, you have all of these visits that you make all over the world, with various political leaders and so on and so forth. And while some may say, well, that looks good on your resume that you're out there and you're, you're putting yourself out there as a political leader, others at home some would argue that perhaps it's all for sure as a matter of boosting your image outside of Belize. Because there's also this sentiment that you're doing things for yourself versus perhaps a genuine or an authentic... Yeah, but I see, you, see, you see, Sani, like you're, de you're descending. No, you're going into opinions like the worst of opinions when there's been no proof of that. That, that is so unfair. Sir. These are conversations no, 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 no. that are yes. held perhaps but there are not conversations, in your There are conversations that are held about the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And when he comes on his couch, you don't go into 
personal conversations of people's personal opinions. That is not the consensus. Well, how do you look at it nonetheless? No, but that is not the consensus of the Belizean people. That is not what you captured when you did your extensive investigation mm -hmm. of the municipal bodies. So you would come with the, the diehard PUPs and whatever people may have an opinion on me. That is not the prevailing sentiment of Belizeans. But how do you I, I'll tell to you, it nonetheless? No, but I don't, I don't allow that to rent space mm -hmm. in my mind. I know what I see mm -hmm. every day because you are being unfair. I sent you, when I finished my national tour, mm -hmm. I sent you all of the pictures. And I can assure you that you did not bring it up on your morning talk. So you prefer to focus on me going out, being recognized on behalf of Belize. Because one of the last recognitions I got, one you, of the last, one of the last, one of the, no, 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 but not, uh, not abundant coverage. But look at the way you're twisting uh, some conversation that you heard for, for the negative rather than talk about the fact that I am up and down. You go downstairs and look by my car right now. Mm -hmm. I have a black car that is white, mm -hmm. white with, with dirt and dust because I drive up and down the highway. Mm -hmm. go to every constituency in this country. Um, so as much as I travel abroad, no one travels this country as much as I do, mm -hmm. or I would say more than I do. Yeah. No politician. So as much as I meet with my political colleagues on behalf of Belize, that mm -hmm. is for the benefit of Belize, that is not for the benefit of me. When I was recognized in the South Carolina House of Representatives, which is a red state, Republicans, red state, I was recognized. But Belize was recognized as well. Mm -hmm. My colleague, the, 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 the House member in South Carolina said he encourages everyone to go to Belize because there's economic opportunity. That is beneficial for Belize. That is not to build some image. I have real relationships. People really respect me mm -hmm. across the globe. When I go to St. Lucia and meet with a former Prime Minister Chastney, when I go to Jamaica and meet with a Prime Minister Holness, when I go to Barbados and meet with Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell, that is, those are real relationships that are being built for the benefit of the country. And when I travel all around this country, you say nothing. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what you're getting and what I'm getting are different. And regardless of what you and the prime minister say uh which is not that what i say sir so so not but again you you hearsay is inadmissible in a court of law i believe hearsay should be inadmissible uh, <laughs> when we're having these <laughs> conversations it's the platform for me to yeah. be able to ask you these questions well, then you have to be fair on the you ground. have to be fair i don't believe that's what you're hearing on well the ground. well well mr barrow yeah since we're short on time, we yeah. want to give you uh, a final opportunity to mention any last words. Yes. I'd just like to thank everyone uh, that came out uh, to vote in the municipal elections. And I encourage more people uh, to come out and vote uh, in the general elections. I encourage everyone to continue um, fighting for what is right, to continue demanding uh, the best um, from your elected officials, from your government and you know i encourage uh, the government of belize mm -hmm. to not take the belizean people for granted uh, let not uh, the municipals inflate your egos and continue to serve and, and make this country as good as it could be uh, for everyone not just the upper echelon all right well thank so you very much for stopping by yeah. uh, giving us your time you are a busy man as you mentioned yeah. You travel all over the country. <laughs> no, I, I, it, it's no, a we, fact. It, but Isani would, Isani would not say that. Isani would not say that. Isani would not say that. No, no, no. I agree with you. Uh, 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 your, your vehicle does this, so it's mine. It's black too. And no, the, man, the but highway that, that, show it. Oh, the highway show it. I think I'm going to obstruct me. No, 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 right, no, right, no, no. But we take another quick break. And when we come back, Open Your Eyes continues. Thanks for having me, guys. That's right.